Okay, can you hear me good? Yes. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is remember last time we kind of, <clears throat> okay, uh, Nick bonding. This is uh, what we were discussing yesterday, uh, last time. What Nick bonding is, we using two network adapters and putting it together and uh, using it both at the same time. And if one goes down, the system and network connection will still be there because uh, if one goes down, other one will take over and it will, it will send us an alert and then we'll fix it. So, so what it is, is uh, there are two network cards. Network card one and network card two. One and two. And they are putting together in, uh, they are being bonded together. It's like bonding together. You're stitching them together so that if one goes down, other one will take over and then and then the network connection will still be there, okay? So we're gonna follow this document today and hopefully we should be able to get this working today, okay? How is the practice coming along? I need to know. It's really, really important if you really care about getting a job and all that, you should get the, uh, you should practice it every day, at least two hours. Don't practice two hours all together at the same moment, just uh, set aside like half hour, half hour, and then 45 minutes. That way you get all your two hours in there. Or 40, my 45 minutes, 45 minutes, then half hour. Okay, so I have uh, one of them here, so I'm gonna work on this one here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, and then we'll look in here, and then we'll see. We have two network cards enabled here, okay? So we're gonna work off that. Okay, so let me clear this. So we have two network cards. Once we enable it and we restarted it, when when we type it IF config, normally we would see only one, but 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 we have two in here. How you know you got two in here? Because you have to look at this number here, ETH4 and ETH3. Normally it should be ETH zero and ETH one, but don't worry about that. But uh, what you have to do is you have to run this command and then whatever the command is using it, ETH three and ETH four, you have to start using that. You cannot use the ETH one if it's not showing. Use the one which is showing, whichever one is showing here. Okay, so very first thing our document says is, uh, config files. These are the configuration files. This is where they are located. These are the configuration files we are going to worry about. So we are worrying about three configuration files and then the directories where they are located are two directories we are worried about in this. And then the package name, which is built-in package name, we are going to use that. Okay? So it says uh, two NIC cards are needed for this bonding. So let's go ahead and go back in here. NIC card, NIC card one and NIC card two, two adapters are here. So we, we satisfied rule number one. Okay, number two is, it says active, 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 passive. So what does, what does it mean is with the bound, with the bond, bond is going to be active all the time. And then one network card will be active at the same time the bond is active. One will be on hand. It won't be active right away, but it will be switching back and forth. Okay, so this is going to be active and this is going to be active. And this is active, but it's not, it's not uh, actively working because it says passive. Okay, did you get the concept? 
So second of second option it says is go ahead and go look for if config. We have to go in this folder here first. We will navigate to this folder, which I have it up here also. You navigate into this folder and take a look if this file exists. IFCFG ETH3. So it looks like um, the configuration we are using is a matching what we have here. When you are practicing it, if this doesn't if this doesn't match, the only word thing that wouldn't match would be the last number. It would be three, four over in this scenario, but you may end up having six or seven or zero and one. So the best way where you would know which one you're going to be using it is type if config, and then it will tell you. Okay, we're going to be end up using three and four. So let's go ahead and navigate to this folder. CD slash etc slash sysconfig. Okay, so when you partially type something, you could use the tab key on your keyboard. That way, it partially types it for you. Let me go ahead and bring the keyboard. OK, you guys should be getting in a habit of using a, a keys a lot. Give me one second. I'm checking on Abdul Malik. OK. And then network and then you just push a tab key. And these are all the ones that are showing up in network. So all you need is network script. Okay. You type it furthermore and they type like this and it will auto fill it for you. Now let's clear the screen. Let's do LS. Okay, luckily we do have we do have this file ETH2 and ETH, I'm sorry, ETH3 and ETH4 is also being used, okay? But ETH, ETH 0, 1, 2, and 3 is there, but it's not being used because, it, because it's, it's been used up somehow by something else might have happened and then it's not using it now. Okay, so the reason it's uh, changing its number is because it's using the, it's using the, um, MAC address. Anybody know what MAC address is? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this three here since we are using ETH three and ETH four. We don't need this three three uh, ETH zero one two three. Okay, so to make things simple, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. RM hyphen RF Okay, it's gone. I'm going to delete one and I'm going to delete two. Okay, so we the only file we have is IFCFG ETH3 and IFCFG ETH4. Okay, let's type IF config again. So you see the network, the IP address is assigned to both of them, okay? Both of these network cards. And then I'm gonna talk to you about uh, the MAC address. So the this alphanumeric number you see here is a MAC address. MAC address is unique to its every network card. 
OK, there is one more place where you can look at the MAC addresses. When you come up here and then when you right click in here and network. Then we drop down and you see a MAC address in here. Let's see if the MAC address is matching up. With any of these. OK, network. OK. So eight zero zero. OK, I'm sorry. The, this is the MAC address. When you look at the MAC address, it has is starting with zero, then colon zero zero, then colon two seven four two nine seven four D. OK, so this is matching up with Ethernet adapter one. OK, that way you could reference it back when you start this up and you don't know which one is it's using this using Ethernet adapter one. So ETH three is adapter one and adapter two. See if it's going to match up with this one here, ETH four. And it does. 080027FF29AE. So it's matching up. OK, so what are we going to do is we're going to have to go into each each file and edit it. So let's do LS again. But we're going to copy this. And what we're going to do is VI. And then paste it in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to match this in here the way it is. So it says device ETH3, which is matching. Type is Ethernet. OK, and it says on boot is yes. And then uh, it says boot proton none. So we're going to go ahead and make this DHCP to none. OK, and then which one we are mis missing in here? Master. M-A-S-T-E-R equal. We're going to give it a name bond zero. Bond zero. And then slave yes so this ethernet eth3 is going to be a slave of bond zero okay so what we're doing here is bonding one two three four five one two three four five six okay so we could essentially get rid of this here type it says ethernet so i deleted it now I'm going to save and exit. And then I'm going to do that same thing for number four. OK, device is ETH4. On boot is yes. We don't need type. And boot proto, it says uh, DHCP, but we're going to change it to none. OK, and then this is also going to be slave for bond zero. And then master. Master is bond zero. OK. So let me go ahead and go back in there and make sure it's correct. So devices for on boot. Yes, boot proto. Is none. Master and slave. So it doesn't matter what order it's in here. Over here, it's, it's showing you in different order than compared to what we have here. As long as you have all the spellings and everything correct, you should be good. And then we're going to go look for IFCFG hyphen bond zero. We've been using bond zero, but we want to make sure if it's there or not. So let me clear the screen and let me type LS PWD. So we are in a correct directory here, etc sysconfig network scripts. This is this is the folder we want to be in. Over here, this is the folder. All this all these three files are in this folder here. So I see bond zero doesn't exist. Okay, don't worry about it if bond zero doesn't exist. You could create one.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a, a master IP address and this uh, ETH3 and ETH4 will lose the IP address. See how this is being assigned another IP and this is being assigned another IP. So what you could do is you could essentially open up another terminal and try to connect using this IP from the another terminal here. So let's uh, go ahead and try that. See, root. So you have two Ethernet adapters using two different IPs for the same host name. Okay, let's type host name here. Now at this moment, it doesn't matter. I can't tell which IP did you use to connect to, to this terminal because we use 16 here and I use 64 here to connect. So let me just get out of this. So the file ifcfg bond zero doesn't exist. So we're gonna go ahead and create it. So let me clear this. We don't have to like specifically create and edit it. We could just create one at the at the same time we could go into the edit mode okay the command is uh, vi ifcfg hyphen bond zero and then you hit enter okay so you go into enter mode and type device always remember the way i'm typing device it says device in here Whichever one is in capital letters, it need to be in stay in capital letters, okay? You can't type bond zero in uppercase. It has to be in lowercase. And the next line, boot proto. Okay, boot proto is static. What does static means? That the IP address is not gonna change. Most of this computer, they change the IP address after a few weeks but we are making sure this server doesn't change the ip address okay it just has to be that way and what kind of type is this okay this is a bond it says uh, i'm going to just leave it lowercase here bond i'm not sure if it matter or not but i'm probably sure it doesn't matter now we're gonna we're gonna physically assign the IP address because before, if when you looked at the other ones, you don't have to put in the IP address. It was automatically assigned by the DHCP. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host um, Configuration Protocol. DHCP. That's what it stands for because it gives out dynamically assigned IP. What that means is the IP address will change, but we are making it static here. We are telling the system that the IP address is not going to change and we're going to physically assign the IP address. So 192.168.1.64. It was 64, right? So don't, don't go into this document here and give this, give this number here. You, you have to be you have to uh, do some research here and find out which IP address your computer uh, networks, network system is using in your, so in your um, environment. So I'm, I'm on a different host now, and this one is using 192.168.1.33. So all this up until this is everything is same and then the last number is changing, okay? So how do you know which, uh, um, how do you know which, um, how is this IP is being assigned? This is being assigned by your home router. Your home router is usually 192.168.1.0. When you type that in the browser, it will come up there. 192 okay mine is like 1.1 okay this is what the home router is you may have logged into your home router usually is 1.1 this is 1.1 and then when you go into the 
basic settings uh, network okay attach devices okay it will take a moment and it will show you how many devices are attached to the system okay see we are using uh, over here we are using 33 so it's showing up here with this one of this uh, host is using 33 and this is the mac address so this is the mac address your ip address will change but your mac address is hardwired into it so it will never change okay so that way that way your system uh, that's how uh, things are being tracked if somebody is uh, investigating you this is they're going to come in here and start looking at these things here you, you could try to change this but this these things won't change and uh, see I, it's actually showing us the device name also how is the device name showing because i changed the device name to host name this is also called host name this is what it is and look i have a printer on uh, the network here this is the ip address for the printer and then there is a computer uh, one computer that's ip address this ip address somebody's iphone is connected i have no idea what that is and these the other things uh, maybe uh, some other things uh, that may be on the network here okay but don't think too much into it so before you determine how you're going to use uh, 64 you just have to come here and type ip if config if you're configuring the same host if you're configuring the same host out of two out of two you just try to figure it out one of them okay don't look at this one here this one is already have been uh, set up so this is showing bound zero here so one of them is already being used so we could you could use the existing ip of one of the eth0 eth1 whatever that my case may be so in this scenario the earlier i'm taking the i'm stealing it from the uh, the one of the other one eth3 had it 64 so i'm assigning it to bond zero okay and it, it says net mask how do you know what net mask is again you have to run if config and look for the mask number here most of the time this is always going to be same exact thing for anybody even when you have been practicing it it will be probably be 255.255.255.0 make sure you're putting in dot not a comma or a hyphen so you type net mask equals 255.255.255.0 when you come in here and when you type when you type in one of the other hosts and it says one go ahead and type one okay don't rely on this one it could be wrong but most more than likely it would be 255.255.255.0 okay and then let's go to next when you see on boot what does on boot means on boot means when the system starts yes you want this to start and then you want you to grab this ip address to it okay all right i'm gonna go ahead and save and exit okay so we did some uh, configuration but uh, the things are the things didn't change much here because it says 192.168.1.4 is eth eth3 and eth4 is uh, some other assigned ip but when we're going to go furthermore is going to all this going to change here why is going to change because we're going to make an entry into this file bond config so let's go ahead and go into this uh, folder here and see if the file exists at all okay ls hyphen l okay we are after a file name bond.config so let's take a look here it doesn't exist bonding.config doesn't exist so what are we going to do we're going to type vi bonding 
dot conf c o n f the for don't type config config you have just have to type conf c o n f what it means is it's a configuration file and type exactly the way it is alias a l i a s space bond zero space bonding and then you escape out of it and you save and exit let's type if config here again i couldn't type today so nothing has changed yet because it has not taken effect so then what you're going to type is you're going to type this command here mod probe bonding m o d p r o b e space bonding this command mod probe okay this command mod probe is a built in command Okay, so it's gonna type exactly the way it is, lowercase, then a space, then bonding, okay? All right, so I ran that command, it went to a second line, that means I did hit enter simultaneously. So let's type it config. Okay, so this is still there. So what you're gonna have to do next is type this command, ls mod grab bonding. And it says bonding in here. So what does mean is the service is running. Okay, now what? So for us to uh, to tell the system that this is uh, what we wanted, and then the, we want to remove this, and we want to see. Oh, okay. Do you see? It says bond zero is being used as ETH 64. But what I'm going to do is right now. ETH4 is still showing uh, 6, right? But this won't take effect up until uh, when I restart the system. Or let me restart the network services, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look here. So the, to restart the network services without shutting the computer down is, this is how you type, service space network restart. Okay, so right now the system is disconnected here because it is we're using party to connect. So more than likely, we're gonna just use this IP address in a minute to go ahead and connect back, okay? Okay, so it disconnected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to reconnect. It's not, it's not gonna do that here. So give me one second here. I'm closing this and let me bring the party back up. And then uh, let me see if this is gonna load. Okay, 192.168.1.64. Okay. It's this one here. That's the one we configured here. And then you could grab for INET. <coughs> so service is there. So let's let me start the service again. Service space network restart. Okay, we we got at this moment, we got everything says okay. And let me type if config. Okay, there is another command IP ADDR. 
and uh, we'll take a look here. There is no IP address. 64, bound zero. It says 64. So let's go ahead and try it again. So 192.168.1.64. So it's not working. So what we're going to do is we're going to just simply restart the system. OK, let's go ahead and do that. What's the command to restart the system? Zero. What was it? In it zero. No, in it six, in it zero shut is, oh. shuts is down. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 I got it mixed up. Yeah. And there's a lot of things happening here. I, as I mentioned earlier, we, I talked, I went through the booting process and there is, a, you should always remember what the booting process is, okay? Oh man. It's going to go into the other mode here. I'm not doing anything specially. I'm just rebooting the host. Okay. You type E here. E give a space. Then you type three enter. And B to boot. Okay, I'm going to type root password. Okay, you could type this way too I F C O N F I G and then E T H three, right? So E T H three doesn't have anything, and let's go to E T H four. It doesn't have anything, but uh, the one we configured bond zero, it has the IP address because we physically assign this IP address to this, to the system. Let's go ahead and uh, go and try to see if we could connect. Okay, yeah, we are able to connect. Well, I'm gonna show you how. So let's just launch party single instance and then type 192.168.1.64. I kind of like to save the colors here. And then appearance, you go in here, you go 12. Okay, so I'm the 192.168.1.64, it matches up here. So I'm gonna save. Then I'm going to open and it connected to this system here. So I'm going to type root password in. Okay, then I'm going to type if config. Now you see after a restart, the system is using 192.168.1.64 is assigned to this here and this two three uh this uh, eth3 and eth4 are uh, these are slave this is slave so the bond zero 
it's using the network interface card of this card and this card. It has two cards in it and it's being using both cards simultaneously, but one is turned by right now, but it, we couldn't tell if one is active or passive, okay? Let's see if I could tell if one is active or passive. Ninety-seven D. Okay, you could see at this moment here, it's using the hardware ID for ETH three, and the hardware ID for bond zero is same. All right, let's do do a trick here. What happened is a disaster struck, and then uh, one of the NIC card is down. We're going to take this one out and then see how is that going to work. So for that, we're going to shut it down. What is the command to shut down? Yeah. Zero from prior wrongs, prior six. Yeah. Six is restart, zero is shut down. Okay, yeah, we're going to shut it down. And you could also see it's shutting it down. Here it's going through the process. All right. So it says power off. Let me go ahead and go into the settings, go into network. And then what we're going to do is this is the one 4D it was using it, right? So, uh oh. All of a sudden, the network card is down. Okay, so I'm going to start it back up here. We'll see what happens. I'm going to just make sure it comes back and now uh, run level three. I don't know what real level it's in, but uh, I'm just making sure uh, I'm booting in level three. Okay, I'm gonna shrink this. And then this one is inactive, right? Let me just right click and start. Okay, see, we already know we are able to connect even though, I can't type today. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here. We have bond zero but ETH3 is missing because ETH3 is gone. And then now what you could see is bond zero is now actively using ETH4 resources. So the way you could verify is the hardware uh, zero, um, you could see the hardware address right here. And right here, it matches, but it's gonna keep the, keep the original IP address, which we defined for bond zero, okay? We physically added bond zero and we manually entered IP address where we did that. Over here, each time 
each time whenever this system is going to start is going to negotiate with the router is going to negotiate with the router and it will ask the router for the static uh, static ip address for this specific host router doesn't have to but we 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 said in the system in here to make it static and then give me ip address give me the same exact ip address all the time usually they assign the ip address in the uh, corporate environment to the printers printers they have a specific ip address because when the system reboots and when you try to send something print job to it it stays the same let's go into attached here and we should be able to see somewhere in here uh the static ips so here uh, 64 is assigned to this mac address and this is the host name it kind of picked up the host name too see host name is accurate zmpt01 at corp. Uh, zmprotect.com here so let's go ahead and take a look uh, in here basic settings nothing Okay, so don't don't worry about too much into this because this is the network part that's been uh, that will take care of the different group here when you are working at the job. Okay, now we're gonna play another game here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shut this down, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into network, and then uh, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take number two down and bring number one up. Okay. So let's shut it down. What's the command to shut down, uh, Bashar? Init zero. Yeah, init zero. Okay, once we run this command here, yeah, this host will start to go down. Are you able to fix your host? Are you able to fix your uh, Bashar? I installed new one. We tried yesterday, like I tried for two hours, but very Yeah, in the booting, I couldn't get the IP address. IP address? Yeah, for the new uh, server. So you have to go into this folder here. Go into this folder, and then uh, you have to first type ifconfig and see which one is it using. Is it three, four, or ETH one? And then you go into this folder here, CD into this folder, then do LS, and see if this, if this IFCFG, ETH four is there or not. Okay. It's showing in here, but it's not showing in there. So create one. Okay. Okay. Or just edit it. Go into VI, and maybe it is it is turned off. But it's if not, like then. Uh, it's showing number, uh, but it does, it's not like clear. Uh, it's not like the IB number, different number. Like, exactly, uh, exactly. What you have to do is you have to go in here and then on boot, you have to make it, it was set to no, so you have to make it yes, okay? I'm pretty sure all you have to do is edit it and make it yes. Because I think I remember everybody else could watch for this uh, when I was helping you earlier on. It was on board, it was set to no, right? We were making it yes. Okay, let's go ahead and go in here and go into network. And then, uh, okay, so number one is on. So let's turn the one on and we're gonna turn off two, okay? And hit okay. And then let's power it back on.
Okay, the host is on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, it says inactive here, we're gonna retry to reconnect it. There you go. Okay, even though one of the net network card is down, we are still able to connect. Okay, in real real world scenario, the system won't go down the way we are restarting it. For demonstration purpose, I'm doing it. But in real world, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the network card is start, won't be showing up in here. So that way, you know, you could come back in here and then do a if config. And you see ETH4 is gone, ETH3 is here. And then it's using the same hardware address. Same hardware address. And on top of that is it's using the same IP address. So for example, if you're running a big website, you know, so many people will be connecting in, it doesn't matter if there is a hardware failure because we have one backup network card that will still be keeping it up. You will get a system alert that uh, you will get like an email type subscription or something that uh, ETH4 has went down and uh, engineer will take a look at it and fix it promptly. Okay. Practice this really good. You're gonna be using this every day, day in and day out, you're gonna be using this. First day on the job, if you get uh, something like this, don't be surprised. But you, when you go, to, go on to a job here, you could just come to this website here. This is a pretty good references here. If you get stuck here, you could uh, go in here and read through and uh, take a reference, okay? All right, so moving along, I'm gonna show you how to crack the password. I kind of unofficially showed you, but uh, this is the official one, how to crack a password, okay? So if you have one system here and you, all of a sudden you forgotten what the password is, so what you have to do is pretty simple. So we're gonna we're gonna work on how to create a pass uh, recover a password for Red Hat six and seven. They both are a little bit different. So all of a sudden uh, you are disconnected here. Okay, and then uh, okay, you're over here, and all of a sudden you don't know what the password is. Okay, you typing root and you keep typing password, keep typing password, keep typing password, you are stuck now. Okay, what are you gonna do? So you're gonna follow these exact, exact things here to recover the password, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna physically turn it off Okay, it's off. And then it's this one here. It's this one here, okay? It's off. So I'm gonna turn it back on. And then you have to you have to be really prompt and it's telling you to hit any key to grab menu. So you at the countdown you hit something, any key, and it says uh, at the menu, hit E. So hit E and then it says uh, select the kernel option and hit uh, hit E again. So select E and hit E again. And this so far, this is all familiar, right? Bashar, you've done this before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yes, yeah. So you've been doing number three here. 
but what we're going to do is we're going to do number one. Can somebody tell me what is number one? Single user mode. Yeah, exactly. Without. Number one is single user mode. How many modes it has? Let's go up here and then go into booting sequence. F6. Exactly. There are six. There are there are six. Uh, uh, there are six booting <coughs> options we have here. So what are they? So let's go ahead and go into course notes. Here I jotted down here somewhere. It says you have to remember this in the middle of a night. If I call you 4 a.m. in the morning, you should tell me what all these are. So zero is shut down. We just did that. One is single user mode. We barely went in there. Two is single user mode with NFS. Three is multi-user mode with NFS. And five is Windows. Six is reboot. So we're going to go ahead and go into single user mode. Is usually also a maintenance mode. Okay. Okay. So when when the cursor is over here. Make sure you give it a little space and then type one and hit enter. Or type just B. I'll hit enter. And then number eight is enter and boot. So we already did enter here and then we're going to do boot to restart the system here. Okay, can somebody notice some where, where are we right now? We are already into this logged into the system without a password. Can you notice? See, we don't need password anymore. So if we are already into the system, but we're not in network. Remember the single uh, number single user mode is without any network or anything like that, okay? So just if you type IF config, all the network adapters, they all are turned off. Okay, you already automatically logged in without a password as root. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna use the, okay, then type run level. When you type run level, it's telling you it's in single user mode, S, one S. So there is a password to set a new password. So I'm going to type new password. P A S S W D. This is a password command. When you hit enter, it will tell you to enter a new password. So I'm going to type in a new password. Red Hat one. It's not going to type. You're not going to see anything typing on the screen. Enter. It's going to tell you it's a bad password. It's a dictionary word you're using. So normally it would be usually alphanumeric number about 15 digits long. So I'm going to type new password. I'm going to hit enter. So the password has been changed. So what I'm going to do is I just broke into the system without being having a password. And now I I'm going back into the regular mode with the newly created password. OK. All this document, go through this document here. You won't miss a beat. Okay, you confirm all that. Now we're going to restart the system here. What is the command to restart? Six. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to just do any three here without physically going and restarting the system all the way again through the cycle. We're not going to go through that. We're not going to go through this booting process uh, one to nine. We just type init three. 
and let's see what's going to happen. So it's going to it should come back up quickly and they see uh, it automatically uh, could find that IP address 64. Something failed. OK, see we are it came back up. Can you notice it didn't go through all the big process? Root and then I'm going to type red hat one and I hit enter. There you go. You just logged into a big corporations or hacked into a big corporation system and you pay change the password here. Now you type if config. If you are able to get this, then you are able to connect using party two. So let me go back up here and then uh, restart party. It's disconnected. Now we're going to restart it. And then we're going to type root newly created password. And it's working. What run level? We just type run level. It's in run level three. OK. Any questions? So this is how you crack the password for. This is how you crack the password for uh, Red Hat 6. OK, so the for cracking the password for Red Hat 7 is different. OK. All right, so let's uh, minimize this. I have a Red Hat 7 installed here. OK. Uh, all right, Red Hat 7 here, OK? I haven't been logged into that system for a while, and I have forgotten the password. So what I'm going to do is, OK, this is 7.2, Red Hat 7. So it's been powered off since October, so about three months has been off. So let me go ahead and start. And then I don't even know what the password is. So it's coming up here, and it's telling me, uh, so it, it gives you some time in here. So it says add reboot, hit any key and add grub, hit E. So let me go ahead and I missed that. So let me go ahead and restart. And it's going to give you the countdown here. So hit any key. I just push. What I did was I pushed the C or a, uh, the space bar. Now. Now Red Hat 7 is a little bit different here, but whichever one is selected, we're going to go through this later on. But the first one, top one was selected, right? So leave the top one selected and hit E. It says down on the bottom here, press E to edit the selected item or C to command prompt. So what we're going to do is instruction says at number two. By the way, this is called grab menu. OK, we'll work. We will worry about what grub is later on. But says at boot, hit any key and at grub menu, hit E. So over here it says E2 and then instruction says E also. So let's push E. And now it says it comes up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to line line starting with Linux 16. So how are we going to do it? We're going to simply use the keyboard on the key, the up and down arrow keys here. We're going to use the down arrow keys on the keyboard here, OK? I'm using the down arrow keys on the keyboard just for the demonstration process. I, I'm showing you on onboard keyboard. So you go down here, keep going down, keep going down a little bit. OK, you see? Linux LINUX 16. This is where it says you're going to start of that line. OK, so go ahead and go on the top. And then hold the side arrow key. And we need to come come to the end here where it says U T F8. We're going to come bring this little blinking cursor over here. So the easy way to do is go down one more line and go back up go down and then use the side arrow key. It will bring it back up. OK. Practice this many times here. Now it says at the end of the line, put RD dot break. OK, give a space there 
and type rd dot break. I don't even know what it stands for. You could Google it, but this is exactly how you should type rd dot break. And then it says don't hit enter or anything like that. It says push control and X. Look on the keyboard here. This is a CTRL key. Hold that key and then push the letter X. Okay. When you do that, okay, you have you have to keep this highlighted here. Control X. When it does that, it kind of goes into a black screen and then it's going to restart. It says the system uh, boot to emergency mode. Okay, notice it's already blinking. It didn't ask for uh, it didn't ask us for a password. So the emergency mode is nothing but uh, it's it went into it went into the single user mode. Okay, run level. Type the following. So you have to type exactly the way you see it here. It says M is in capital letters, but no, just is in lower low, lower letters. So simply type mount hyphen O remount comma R W stands for rewrite slash sys root. Okay, you are breaking into the highly secure system here. So when you hit enter, it it remounts itself. Now what you're going to do is we're going to change the root. Ch root to slash sys root. And hit enter. It gives you a different prompt. You were over here to switch root. Now you are into the shell root, okay? And then you have to type Create a new password. Oh, okay, yeah, number 13. We did number 12. Number 13 is just a picture. This is a picture of what you see in here. Number 14 is the command you use to create a new password. You use the same command in Red Hat 6 also. When you were using Red Hat 6, you use the same command here. This is, it, it says capital P, but ignore it. Most of the time, uh, there is no capital capital letters you're using in Linux here. So you just type lowercase p a s s w d. And what you do is you hit enter. Now it's telling you to create your own new password. So I'm going to create a new password. Remember I started off. I started off without knowing the password, right? Now I'm creating a new password. One thing is here is if the password you're using right now is also the same password you previously used, it doesn't care. It will still take it because you're logged in as a single user mode and you logged in as a root. Let me see. Let me type who hyphen r or who. Okay, now those things are still turned off in the single user mode here. This is same thing like our good old Windows XP safe mode. Yahoo, you remember we used to go into safe mode to do some troubleshooting? Yes. This is what it is. This is how you would relate to Windows XP. Okay. And very important. So you have to type this exactly the way it is, okay? Number 17. This is exactly uh, the same process you have to follow. So you have to type touch space forward slash then a period then type auto re label if you misspell it or something anything like that it's not going to work okay let me make sure i'm typing it right auto re label touch space forward slash period and an auto re label and hit enter Okay, it doesn't do anything. And then hit exit. And then uh, type reboot here. Okay, we are on number 19. Okay, now the new password should be effective. We're gonna go into the normal mode. Okay, well, 
I didn't interrupt. I didn't know what uh, mode is going to go into. If it's going to X windows, we'll figure it out. We'll reboot it again and try to go into the number three mode. It might take a little while here, maybe three, four minutes. Okay, it's taking longer than expected, so let me interrupt and uh, re just reset it. I'm going to go to edit and then uh, Okay, I'm not going to interrupt here. Just let me do control X. It's rebooting. Okay, I'm not sure why is it taking so long.
Okay. What we'll do is we just we'll just let it sit there, and we'll carry on with our course today, and then we'll come back to it. So the next item I want to cover is Grub. We this thing came up when we were troubleshooting the password issue, so we want to see what Grub is. Okay. So let me open up a new tab. Okay, what GRUB is, it stands for Grand Unified Bootloader. Okay, what happens is system will be working fine, but what happens is all of a sudden the system crashes. So what you're going to do is when something like that happens, you will be uh, you will get a ticket that says uh, system don't boot anymore. So what you have to do is you have to do some troubleshooting. So over here, uh, give me one second here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some command. What it does is it will it will tell us or it will make the system crash. And then we'll come back and try to fix the issue here. So I'm connected to this system. Uh, let me change the colors. Because I like bright. Looks easier on my eyes. Okay, that uh, the password issue we were working on, it came back up. And then I'm gonna type root, and then I'm gonna type new password. So now I have demonstrated that without having a password, I went into the system, I cracked the password and set a new password in. And then this is how you would crack the password if you have forgotten about forgotten what the root password is okay once you have the root password you uh, pretty much have the full control of the system i'm going to just shut it down and move it away okay so we're going to follow along here so what grub is it's uh, it's just a Grub is a root file system. So when the root file gets system gets corrupted, is uh, you know what we do is we do some troubleshooting here. So we're gonna go into grubconf and take a look what's in there. Okay. So cat slash etc slash grub. And here there are a set of instructions here. And then what it's saying in here is the boot drive is SDA. And then uh, it has some uh, default in here. Default is zero and timeout is five. So when the system starts, it has like timeout. It gives you a timeout for five seconds. So let's go ahead and take a look here if it's gonna say that. Okay, let's do init six. If you're gonna get the Draw countdown for five seconds here. Okay, yep, two, three, four. So it did, uh, it kind of like start, looks like it started from four, but it started from five actually. We're going to go ahead and change this to like 10 seconds here. That way it's much better.
Okay, root. Okay, let me clear this. Let me go ahead and edit. So the default is zero, timeout is five seconds. So we're gonna make it 15 seconds. And then this is what the splash image is. We could go in there and we could change this too. Uh, but what the splash image is, this is what the uh, system configuration files are. And then these are the hidden menus and this is what it comes up, okay? So, I mean, if you are doing like a system engineering day, you need to know more what's going on in here. But for us, uh, what we are learning in here is uh, that's enough. Okay, and you could literally change the boot disk here. We are set to this SDA, uh, dev slash SDA, okay? So let's go ahead and exit. Let's reboot. So now we should have this uh, menu for not just for like five seconds, we should have it for 15 seconds. Okay, there you go. Remember it was only for five seconds, now it's for 15 seconds. Login as root. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to corrupt the grub on purpose so that it keeps going into the um, emergency mode here. So we're gonna go into cd slash boot slash grub. I need to do ls and ls hyphen l. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this file grub.conf. If this file doesn't exist in this form, that means the, there, there is no grub. The grub got like deleted or something, which is nothing but this configuration file earlier. We um, let me cat this here and see what comes up. Okay, it's the same file. Okay, it's the same file, but it has a sim link to in into this etc grub for conf and etc grub are they both are the same files okay okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to purposely <clears throat> do something so that this file got, gets renamed and it will halt the system. So what I'm going to do is, what is the command to uh, rename the file? Okay, to rename a file, the command you use is move, nv. 
MV is a command. You use the MV command to move the files around to you, but you could also use it to rename it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and restart the system. It should, it should go into the corrupted mode. Did somebody notice what I just did? So what I did was I type reboot and it did the same thing as init six. Okay, oh, there you go. Now the system has crashed. If you try to connect, you won't be able to connect. It's gonna go in, into spinning wheel. It keeps spinning and spinning and won't connect. So what we're gonna do is when it comes in here, so very first thing you have to do is you have to type this command here, find, You type find. Find is a find command. You could find files and folders. Grub slash stage one. And hit enter. It will tell you that this is where the grub is sitting at. Okay. So then you type another command. What is another command? You type root. And then you type exactly the way you see HD zero comma zero and close the parenthesis and hit enter. Okay, it says file system is NTFS2 and then the partition type is x83. Okay, I'm not sure what that means is, but this is where you're going to be getting this uh, message. Okay. Okay, so let's let's type ls here. Okay, I think uh, But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to run this command and see if it's going to work, okay? I haven't tried this command in a while. It's essentially this file here. What you have to do is you have to go when you went into grub.conf config file. Yeah, you, you took a look at this place, right? So we're looking at the kernel, blah, 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 RO, blah, blah, blah. So let's see here. What you have to do is you have to go to a neighboring system. This system crashed, right? So what you have to do is you have to go, this one is ZMPT01. You could go to ZMPT02 and take a look at what the kernel information is, okay? So what you have to do is you have to copy this exactly the way it is up until here. And then paste it in here is not going to work. So you have to physically type it in. You have to type it in. K E R N E L slash V M C D Okay, we're going to continue on with our command. We decided earlier that we is going to help us. So this is the command we're going to type the way you see it. Okay, I'm going to type kernel. V M L I N U Z hyphen 2.6. Point three two hyphen six four two.
سفر اعتقد يروح لينكس يحط الان ال اي ان يو زي I can't. Are you talking to me? I could barely hear you. I'm saying like there is error in the written. Like you mentioned L I N U X, you have to put L L L I N U Z. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. RO stands for read only. Root root equals slash dev slash mapper slash VG. This is a volume group. We talked about volume group, right? Underscore red hat hyphen LV underscore root. Okay, it says file not found. Hmm. Uh, you had a typo. You did uh, GV instead of VG. Oh, okay. Good catch. Thank you. So file not found. Okay, let's go ahead and type this again again. Find grab stage one. Okay, it's in. It's in HD zero comma zero and type root. HD zero comma zero file system is ext fs2 and partition type is 0x3 okay and let me go ahead and uh, type the previous command vg bg dev mapper root ro 6486 vlmius okay it looks good to me okay it's not working <clears throat> All right, I'm going to continue on to type the next command and see if it's going to do any difference, but probably not. Init rd slash init ramfs hyphen 2.6.32 hyphen 642.e 16.x86 underscore 64 dot IMG see the number 15 error is uh, giving up so it's not working so I don't know what to do at this moment Okay, so it came back up here. So what I'm going to do is uh, find grub stage
maybe I have to type this okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our good old Google okay so you do some troubleshooting you talk to somebody at your work but if you don't know what's going on here you just go to Google and say somebody has a better idea says how to fix grub and uh, he's selling a software okay he did type uh, root okay it says setup set up hd0 okay let's do that set up hd0 aha uh -huh. okay and then it came up to that it succeeded and looks almost the same in here succeeded what are we doing here and then we're going to type this command sgd successful uh done here right Okay, it may have something else. So now we are to this command here. Find grub, okay, boot, slash grub. It's not there, I know that. Stage one. It's not there. So find grub one okay it did something so it's telling us to do root root sd zero comma zero so it's missing something is missing here if when you look at this here, it's not, it's giving you something else. Can I put one in here? Okay, guys, I'm stuck here at this moment. So what I'll do is I'll research this furthermore and we'll go over rug uh, next week again so this week we we worked on two things three things actually we worked uh, we took a look at uh, nick bonding in deep we had a uh, nick bonding we set it up and actually make it working it's nick bonding and then we cracked the password on uh, red hat 6 and red hat 7 make sure the document is detailed i don't think any steps are we are missing but when you're practicing it take a screenshot and uh, put a picture in the group if nobody responds i'll try to respond okay and then uh, we can uh, work halfway through grub by next week uh, i'll work it through and then see why it's not working here i thought all these instructions are up to date and should be working i tried many times earlier all these instructions are good but that's what the troubleshooting part is you would be uh, troubleshooting a lot why this problem is having you will be troubleshooting one issue for two three days four days five days so don't be surprised when you be end up doing that okay any questions Bashar uh, try to do that if not uh, maybe uh, Yahoo could help you you know how to do that right Yahoo yeah, I was yeah. helping him last night. We, we tried yesterday, but uh, it doesn't work. If you just can Share uh, your screen right now. We still have 15 minutes, so everybody else could let go. 
Hold on, let me stop sharing it. And the problem that he was having is this throwing up 